Good morning. Um, my name is Amir. I am the founder and CEO of Helium. Um, let me see what you guys are looking at. Uh, Helium is um, here to change the way we think about telecoms. Um, we have this elaborate slide here that big, tele big teleco is weighing us down. Who, who here actually likes their telecom provider? Who are your telecom providers? I'm guessing it's Telus and Rogers and guys like that. We have not found, at all the years that I've been doing this, anyone that particularly likes their cell phone carrier. We think that's an interesting opportunity for us. But typically, most telcos are very, very expensive. Um, when I was on AT&T, for example, I would pay $220 a month routinely. Um, coverage indoors, not great on, the, on a lot of telcos. Uh, the contract situation is not great, right? In a lot of cases, you've got to buy a phone, get stuck with the car carrier for two or three years, the SIM is locked, you can't change it. Uh, none of that we think is great. And ultimately, I think it all comes down to this last point, which is that maintaining and building cellular infrastructure is really, really expensive, uh, incredibly expensive. Um, and it's what causes all of these things. So, of course, as you can kind of guess, Helium's job in the world is to revolutionize how we connect to the internet, right? We think there is a much better way uh, to do this, and it is not the way that it has been done for all the years by all the big companies. Helium is the world's largest people-powered wireless network, um, by far. Um, the way Helium works is by empowering people to effectively o operate their own cell towers. Right, so I don't know how old some of you are, but back in the day, it used to be an ATM was the thing you wanted to own, right? Like if you could get an ATM in the middle of a concert venue or something like that, you were going to be printing money because there's a lot of people around and everyone needed to use an ATM. And Helium is kind of similar, except for uh, wireless infrastructure, right? And so the host introduced us as maybe being similar to Uber that way. I think it's similar. Uh, Uber did this for taxi cabs and transportation. I think Airbnb did this for hospitality. And I think Helium does this. Um, for, for wireless. It allows anyone anywhere, like any of you in the audience, uh, to buy a little device, which is what we call a miniature cell tower, uh, and put it somewhere. Um, you can put it in a place with a lot, a lot of foot traffic, ideally, like a Starbucks, uh, or you can put it on a high street or in a strip mall or wherever you want to put it that, where there are a lot of people using cellular data, uh, and you get paid for that data. So for the very first time, uh, a normal person can participate in the telecom industry, which I don't think is a thing that could have happened in the past. Where we started this idea uh, was around IoT. So IoT is the Internet of Things. In our universe, it meant small battery power devices. Maybe this little clicker would be an example of an IoT device. Uh, and these devices were the kinds of things that didn't really work very well using a Wi-Fi network, a Bluetooth network, a cellular network. They're very, very power sensitive. Right? They're, we're talking about sensors that might be this big. Uh, they need to be able to communicate over very vast areas, and they need to have very, very long battery life. We didn't think there was anything that fit the bill. Bluetooth was kind of close, uh, but if you didn't have a phone or some other kind of Bluetooth hub nearby, then your sensor was not, not going to work. And some of those applications were things like precision agriculture, so using sensing to improve farming yields, smart cities, healthcare, logistics, solar, power. Uh, there's all kinds of applications uh, that we think made sense for IoT. And so that, that's how it started. Helium grew to be the biggest IoT network in the world by far. Uh, there were over a million hotspots on the network. We call, hot, we call the access point devices that I've been talking about hotspots. Uh, there were over a million of them at, at peak. I think there's still 300, 350,000 of them that exist today. Uh, coverage almost every country in the world, most cities in those countries. Uh, so it's still by far the largest network uh, in the world and is entirely built uh, by people. We don't operate any of this infrastructure. We don't buy it. We don't place it. It is all a community of people doing this and getting paid for providing connectivity. Uh, what we are doing next and what we are doing now is not only connecting things, but also connecting humans. Uh, so with the, in the IoT world, a lot of the applications that we were talking about were fairly speculative. Right? So a lot of the stuff didn't exist yet. So there, aren't, there isn't a plethora of precision agriculture. Uh, there aren't a ton of healthcare applications that use IoT. So you kind of had to build both sides uh, of the universe. You had to build both the coverage, but also encourage people to build the devices and the, and the applications on the other side. When it comes to cell phone networks, it's a slightly different situation. Literally everyone in the world at this point has a cell phone. Um, the issue is always about cost, coverage, um, and reliability. And so, again, we're employing, we're being kind of boring and just doing the exact same thing we did in IoT. Uh, which is encouraging everyone everywhere 
uh, to go build cellular networks. There's about 100,000 uh, of these mobile hotspots deployed in the United States, unfortunately none in Canada yet. Um, and this has caused Helium to become, again, one of the largest cellular networks in the country. Um, and it's entirely people-powered. It is not big, big companies. It's not us. It's not anyone else building this infrastructure. It is all people. Uh, and when people do it, they share access to the internet. They get paid for it in return. Um, yes, there's a crypto component to it. I don't know if crypto is taboo here in the, at, at Web Summit or not, or whether we're crypto-friendly. Um, but crypto powers underneath like how this gets uh, distributed, how the economics are um, rewarded, how everything works ultimately is crypto powered underneath. But we actually don't expose a ton of that um, to, to the users. So it's a, sort of an interesting application of crypto, one of the few that I, I think is actually useful. So on the one hand, we, we are building uh, wireless networks. And, uh, and on the other hand, we are also building uh, a consumer first cell phone experience. We, we want to change what people think about their cell phone carrier. As, as I mentioned at the start, I've been doing this for quite a long time now. I have never really found anyone who's like, I love AT&T. Right? I don't think I've ever heard those words uh, emitted. And I, I don't know if it's different in Canada, but I don't get the sense that it is. Uh, and so we are trying to change the experience for people uh, and using the, taking advantage of the people-powered network that is being built on the Helium side. Uh, so Helium Mobile is kind of an unusual cell phone carrier. Um, it is one of the only, I think it is the only, that has a completely free plan. Uh, because of the way the network works on the back end, uh, because of this sort of crypto element to it, we're able to offer a, a phone plan that costs absolutely nothing. There's no catches, there's nothing hidden there. It is literally free. Uh, and you get three gigabytes a month and some amount of minutes um, for doing that. There are no contracts, so you can jump in and out of this service anytime you want. Um, you earn rewards for sharing your location. We're not selling the location data. This is just how the crypto part of things works. Uh, so as you're walking around and as you're sharing your data in terms of how good coverage is in those areas, uh, you will earn things back for doing that. So you earn these things called cloud points that you can use to buy gift cards and do stuff. Very similar to a, a credit card um, points program or airline miles, just I think for the first time really applied uh, to a cell phone plan. And then the last point here I think is probably the most important. Part of what he is interesting about Helium Mobile uh, is that unlike other MVNOs, which is the technical term for all of these things, like Mint or Boost uh, or Cricket or Visible or any of those plans that you get in the United States, they depend on their carrier, right? So if you're on Mint, they're partnered with T-Mobile, you're always only using T-Mobile. If you're on Visible, it's on Verizon, you're always only using Verizon. What's interesting about Helium Mobile is it uses T-Mobile when it can, and it uses Helium when it can. Uh, Helium is significantly cheaper uh, than T-Mobile. And so this, in this interesting dynamic that we have with users sharing location data uh, informs the Helium community of where they should put hotspots. Right? So if you think of coverage sort of randomly laid out, it's kind of not what we're looking for. We're looking for where are the densest areas of users uh, and trying to get as many hotspots in those places. So the location data that gets shared by subscribers is used by hotspot hosts on the other side uh, to build coverage. So it's kind of decentralized network planning to, to some degree. But this is the sort of symbiotic relationship. And the more Helium coverage there is, the better the, the coverage is for the user overall, but ultimately the cheaper it gets. Uh, and we pass it all on to the user, which is how we're able to do something like a free plan. Um, so as I kind of mentioned, Anyone anywhere can build one of these, uh, build coverage. Uh, we call them hotspots. Best way of thinking of it is like a very miniature cell tower. Uh, the best place to put these is, as I mentioned, extremely high foot traffic areas. You could put one in your house, not really that useful unless you've got a lot of people coming to your house and then you've probably got other questions to answer. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's get them in places where there's a lot of foot traffic. So that's typically malls. Uh, we've got some in airports. Uh, coffee shops, restaurants, and a lot of the time we're not even pitching money when people go and pitch these, the, these, these places. It's like, do you want your customers who are dining at your restaurant to have better cell coverage than they do? Uh, and that tends to be a pretty good pitch for people, but you also make money in the process. So every single time uh, someone uses one of these hotspots to send and receive data, um, whoever operates the hotspot gets paid. And so this is really a way in, again, very Uber-like, very Airbnb-like, uh, but sort of monetizing real estate power and internet and turning it into money. So um, one of the interesting things that has kind of happened over time with Helium as it's grown 
uh, is that legacy telecom companies have become interested in using the Helium network the way that Helium Mobile uses the Helium network. Uh, I think they've realized that it is a much more efficient way of building wireless networks than the way they typically do it. Um, for those that don't know, like typically it's tens, hundreds of billions of dollars for these companies to build large wireless networks and fairly impossible for them to get networks deployed in new places quickly. Um, so it's not like you build a network once and then you're done. Uh, populations are shifting, new housing developments are being built, new commercial locations are being built. So they're always in a race trying to build more and more coverage. Uh, and I think a lot of these guys are starting to realize that there are more efficient ways to do it than spending hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, so one example of that is a company called Movistar in Mexico. Uh, Movistar is Telefonica's subsidiary in Mexico, Telefonica's gigantic Spanish-based um, telco. Movistar has exactly the problem that I was describing. They don't own a lot of their own infrastructure in Mexico. Uh, they actually pay Telcel and AT&T for access to their towers. Uh, and they don't want to keep doing that anymore. It's really, really, really expensive for them. Um, so we did a pilot with them a couple of years ago. We said, hey, we think we could cover an entire little town um, with helium coverage and see how that works for you guys. Like, see if your users there get better coverage, whether it's cheaper for you. Um, of course, it did. Um, they were very happy with it. We were very happy with it. So now this is expanding uh, nationwide across all of Mexico. Uh, so hopefully starting in Q2 or Q3, every single Movistar subscriber, uh, when they are within range of a Helium hotspot, will automatically jump onto that hotspot and start using it. Um, and I think that last part is actually a key point. Like You guys, I'm sure, are very familiar with things like hotel Wi-Fi, airplane Wi-Fi, where you've got to like go through a portal system. right? Like You join a Wi-Fi network, a thing pops up asking you for information, you hit submit, then you're on. This isn't how this works. This uses a technology called Passpoint. Uh, it is a relatively old Wi-Fi technology that has only recently become popular again, uh, but it allows people to automatically join wireless networks, in our case, using the SIM card as an authentication mechanism. So you don't have to do anything. It works just like a wireless net, like a traditional cellular network. You're just walking around and you're jumping on and off um, cellular and Wi-Fi all the time. And this concept is called wireless convergence. I think it's gonna be a big thing. It's what 6G is gonna be, be all about. Uh, and you'll see it with things like satellites, uh, as well as things like helium with Wi-Fi. So in the States, um, we are doing the same thing with AT&T and other carriers. AT&T uh, is the only one that we've announced so far, uh, but most people in the community know who the others are already. Same story here, though. Like AT&T subscribers, anytime they're near a helium hotspot, automatically use that hotspot. And the host of that hotspot gets paid uh, for every gigabyte of data that gets sent and received. And so this is... Again, like a very good proof point for us that even large telcos like AT&T are struggling with this idea, especially indoors, of how to get more coverage. It may not be obvious or intuitive, but 90% of cell phone data occurs indoors. Uh, I think when we think of cell phone usage, we think of like driving on a highway or being outdoors or something like that. It, there is some of that, but the vast, vast, vast majority of this is all happening indoors. Uh, and the big telcos don't have great ways of creating indoor coverage cheaply. Uh, they used to use a thing called distributed antenna system, DAS, uh, these little you know, cell tower boxes that were connected by fiber, wildly too expensive for like, lighting up something like a Starbucks. Uh, I think the cost was 50, 100,000 plus to do that, uh, versus with Helium, someone is putting a $100 access point in the Starbucks and you're accomplishing the same thing. So plenty of advantages to doing it um, the way we're doing it. So some stats, these are already way old, uh, which is, Good. Um, we crossed a million uh, daily users for the first time over Memorial Day weekend last weekend. Uh, and what that means is a million individual phones uh, connected through the Helium network and sent and received data that way. Um, some combination of them are AT&T, some of the other carriers that I haven't mentioned, uh, some are Helium mobile subscribers. Anyone who is working with the Helium network uh, counts in this number. Um, but as you can kind of tell from the graph, it is one of those up into the right looking graphs, um, and it's over a million now, which we think is a really big deal. Like a million people are actually like touching the Helium network every single day, uh, and we expect that number to just keep rising rapidly. Typically transferring 30, 35 terabytes a day. For us, that's kind of a big deal, but in the scheme of like global telecoms, this is nothing. Um, I think someone like AT&T is moving petabytes upon petabytes per day, um, which is good. Like this gives us a lot of upside. There's a ton of room. Um, there's a ton of ways we can still go here. Um, but overall, Helium is getting very, very popular and starting to see some real traction. Uh, we have a, a site called Helium World that I would uh, definitely encourage you guys to go take a look at if interested. 
Um, not only does it give you these high-level stats you can see on the left in, in terms of how many hotspots there are, how many users there are, how much data is being moved, uh, you can also use this to kind of see what's going on in, in the Helium world, right? So there's a way to see how much data uh, is being transferred from different hotspots on the map. There's a way to see where the highest foot traffic areas are. So people use this as a combination of a reporting tool, but also a planning tool, uh, because if you're someone interested in deploying a hotspot, you can use this map to see where, where are the busiest areas where it would get paid the most, uh, basically. And so very, very cool site, always adding new, uh, new and interesting stuff to it. But ultimately, we think the future of telecom should be in your guys' hands, like all, all of our hands. Um, the way that it's been done in the past has made it very prohibitive for people like us to get involved. It's been heavily gated uh, by regulatory issues. So for example, you have to own licensed spectrum, which costs hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, and typically, the technology hasn't existed to allow us to do this in the same way that I don't think Uber would have worked prior to the iPhone. Um, so now you've got this arrival of different technologies that make it possible, which we think is crypto, which allows this decentralized coordination of people who want to get paid. Uh, we think it's technology like Passpoint that allow phones to automatically jump on and off Wi-Fi networks without having to think about it. Uh, we think it's technologies like Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7, which have an enormous amount of capacity, which make it possible to cover things like a, a basketball arena or something like that with a very small number of devices. So there's a convergence of technologies that we think is very, very important um, that allows this to be possible now uh, when it wasn't really possible before. We recently launched a... Uh, $50 million coverage grant program. Uh, and the intention of that is to try and encourage coverage in very specific areas where we think it is the most valuable. So one way of thinking about it is that anyone can put one of these devices anywhere, and that's great. And ideally, they'll use Helium World as a tool to help them guide where that should go. Uh, the other is that we are trying to be quite strategic about creating overlap between Helium Mobile subscribers and the Helium network coverage. Um, so to start with, uh, this coverage grant is largely focused on New York. Um, so you'll see, uh, hopefully starting today actually, you'll start to see subway cars in New York with Helium Mobile all over them, uh, billboards in Times Square, the usual thing. And, and really the purpose of that is us trying to experiment with this combination of can we get subscribers on the one hand and, and Helium network coverage on the other hand, and can we cause them to overlap? And when that overlap happens, do good things happen? Like do cell phone bills go down? Um, does customer satisfaction go up because they have coverage in more places and typically places that they didn't have it? Um, so this is going to keep growing. It's going to keep expanding to different cities across the United States. Uh, we're interested in other countries, but for now it's the United States and Mexico only. Um, and lastly, would strongly encourage you guys to join the movement. Um, if you're interested in participating on the network side, helium.com is where you want to go. Uh, if any of you are Americans or will be traveling back to America after this, would strongly love you to look at heliummobile.com uh, and consider switching away from whatever you're using. My cell phone bill is about $5 or something like that now versus the $220 they used to pay AT&T. Um, so overall, it's a good thing. Um, that's all I got. Thank you very much. Um, and hopefully, I'll see you on helium.com.